Hello listeners, this video discusses Virginia Woolf's essay, Mr. Bennett and Mrs. Brown. Let us see a small author note. Virginia Woolf, her full name is Adeline Virginia Woolf, born in the year 1882, died in the year 1941. She was an English writer. She was considered one of the most important modernist 20th century authors and a piney figure, she uses stream of consciousness as a narrative device. Virginia Woolf was encouraged by her father to begin her writing career professionally in the year 1900. Virginia Woolf along with the brother's intellectual friends, they created a group of association where there were English writers, intellectuals, philosophers and artists in the first half of the 20th century that includes Virginia Woolf, John Maynard Keynes, E.M. Foster and Lighten Scatchy. In the year 1912, Virginia married Leonard Woolf. The couple founded the Hogarth Press. Hogarth Press is a publishing imprint of Penguin Random House which was founded in the year 1917. In the year 1915, Wolf published her first novel, The O.H. Out. Her best known works include Mrs. Dolloway, 1925, To the Lighthouse, 1927, Orlando, 1928, and her famous known essay is A Room of One's Own in the year 1929. In popular culture, many writers has used Virginia Woolf as a character in the novels and their works. Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf in the year 1962 is a play by Edward Albee. Michael Cummingham's novel in the year 1998, The Hours, focused on three generations of women affected by Virginia Woolf's novel, Mrs. Dolloway. Woolf's contribution to 20th century literature and her essays are a source of influence on the literary field, particularly feminist criticism. Contemporary writers like Margaret Atwood, Michael Cummingham, Gabrielle Gracia Marquez and Toni Morrison stated that her work was a great influence for them. Virginia Woolf is also studied around the world in many organizations such as the Virginia Woolf Society and the Virginia Woolf Society of Japan. Mr. Bennett and Mrs. Brown This essay was published in the year 1924 and it explores about modernity. Modernity is a topic in the humanities and social sciences. It is both a historical period, socio-cultural norms, attitude and practices that arose in the wake of the Renaissance. Let's see about the background of why Virginia Woolf wrote this essay, Mr. Bennett and Mrs. Brown. This essay was given as a lecture to the Hebritus Club at Girton College, Cambridge in the year 1924. Later, her speech was published as an essay that year under the title character in fiction in the criterion criterion is a journal edited by the prominent anglo-american poet t.s Eliot. now before we move into the essay let's see the writer arnold bennett arnold bennett was an english author he's best known as a novelist who wrote prolifically arnold bennett had written a review of Woolf's Jacob's Room, which was published in the year 1922. Jacob's Room is a third novel of Virginia Woolf. So, Bennett wrote a review about Woolf's novel in Castle's Weekly. Castle's Weekly is a British book publishing house founded in the year 1848 by John Castle. So, he wrote a review in the year 1923 in the month of March. His review provoked Virginia Woolf to rebut it. Rebut meaning claiming or proving that something is false. 
In her diary, Virginia Woolf has recorded that Bennett accused her of writing about characters that could not survive. Her response was published in the United States in Nation and Athenarium, which was a political weekly newspaper. Her response was titled as Mr. Bennett and Mrs. Brown. Her response to Bennett encouraged her to develop her ideas of cultural relativism. In the following years, she presented these ideas as a paper read to the Hebridus Society at Cambridge University in the year 1924, 18th May. Hearing to her lecture, T.S. Eliot, who was the then editor of the Criterion, which was a British literary magazine, T.S. Eliot asked her for an article and she submitted her talk which she had in Cambridge University, Heretical Society. As I earlier mentioned, this essay was titled as Character in Fiction and then by the Hogarth Press, it was published in the year 1924 under the present title as Mr. Bennett and Mrs. Brown in Hogarth Press. So, Hogarth Press was founded by Ulf and her husband, Leonard Ulf. The cover of this essay was illustrated by Veniza Bell, who is a sister of Virginia. The cover picture has an image of a woman reading a book. In this essay, Virginia Woolf argues that literary conventions should change as society does and proposes that literary modernism is a means to represent the changing condition of individuals and society in the early 20th century. This essay concerns with the question of how changes in modern life have shaped the development of the novel. So, the Mr. Bennett in the title refers to Arnold Bennett, who was a successful and respected novelist, who was also associated with the Edwardian age. Bennett's career was established during the reign of King Edward VII between the years 1901 to 1910. As Virginia refers, Arnold Bennett belonged to Edwardian age. In contrast, Woolf refers herself and her contemporaries as Georgians. Making a mention of Georgians, she refers it as a generational divide with King George VI's ascension to the throne in the year 1910. Now, this terminology of Georgians has been widely used in the subsequent discussion of the period with a group of writers Virginia refers to. It also includes herself as Georgians usually described as modernists. I already mentioned that Woolf's essay was written in response to a critical review given by Bennett in the year 1922 for her novel Jacob's Room. In Bennett's essay, he titled the essay as Is the Novel Decaying? Bennett suggested that Woolf's work lacked real characters and as such it also failed as fiction and would not survive. I wanted to quote his words. I have seldom read a cleverer book than Virginia Woolf's Jacob's Room, a novel which has made a great stir in a small world. It is packed and bursting with originality and it is exquisitely written but the characters do not widely survive in the mind because the author has been obsessed by details of originality and cleverness. Bennett has published this essay in Kessel's Weekly in the year 1923. So Bennett generalizes this assessment and claims that most novels written by Woolf's and her generation writers neglect character in pursuit of cleverness. So, since Virginia Woolf has given this essay, not essay, a lecture, it bears the characteristics of a speech to a live audience. 
it addresses its argument to the people in the room and the starting point of the discussion goes like this their invitation to speak to you about modern fiction ulf in the opening paragraph she states that her instinctive answer to the prompt was to imagine a character speaking to her so the character says like this my name is brown catch me if you can ulf argues that men and women write novels because they are lured on to create some character which has imposed itself upon them so this belief she shares with bennett she then tries to quote bennett's essay is the novel decaying in which bennett writes the foundation of good fiction is character creating and nothing else if the characters are real the novel will have a chance to engage bennett's argument at first ulf defines character and discusses reality so she takes two terms character and reality the these two terms underpins bennett's criticism of the modern novel in her discussion of character ulf states that everyone knows something about character because ordinary life requires us to understand each other and therefore to be a judge of character she then proposes the most famous sentence in the essay on or about december 1910 human character changed giving a reference to this date she says that this date is to some extent arbitrary arbitrary means not seemingly to be based on any reason or plan and sometimes seemingly unfair let me give further meaning to arbitrary arbitrary is based on or determined by individual preference or convenience rather than by necessity further ulf argues that human relations have shifted those between masters and servants husbands and wives parents and children to demonstrate her point ulf states that she will tell a simple story he then narrates a train journey of a woman from richmond to waterloo ulf describes an incident when she entered a train compartment and found two people who are unknown to her whom she calls mrs brown and mr smith those two are seated and in conversation when ulf entered ulf then speculates about who they are what their relationship is and how they came to be traveling together on the train ulf quotes merits of irrelevant and incongruous ideas crowd into one's head on such occasions the meaning of myriad is a countless or extremely great number of people or things she further writes one sees mrs brown in the center of all sorts of different scenes ulf further argues that character is not simple or singular but a matter of interpretation by the writer and the reader she thus writes mrs brown's character will strike you very differently according to the age and country in which you happen to be born she also illustrates her point that she imagines the different ways that english french and russian novelists would recount mrs brown's journey so each according to their own sets of inherited conventions try to interpret mrs brown's journey having established that character is a matter of interpretation ulf returns to bennett's argument that character must appear real she asks considering mrs brown's complexity what is reality and who are the judges of reality ulf then addresses the distinction bennett makes between his generation represented in ulf's essay by bennett h g wells and john galsworthy and ulf later ulf mentions e m froster d h lawrence and james joyce 
she reveals the different versions of Mrs. Brown that she would be depicted by Edwardian writers according to their characteristic style because Edwardian writers would try to interpret the character of Mrs. Brown according to their cultural values and morality that they followed or that they had during that period. Old further says that for that generation and age, the convention was a good one, but the Edwardian tools are the wrong ones for us to use. Wolf then concludes her speech and lecture by reminding her audience that the reader has a part to play in an understanding of character. She quotes, A writer is never alone because there is always the public with him. Rather than the decorum of the Edwardian writer, Wolf advocates for an intercourse of friendship between the author and the readers who are partners in the business of writing books. She then argues that Mrs. Brown is an old lady of unlimited capacity and infinite variety because nothing can limit the interpretations made by different writers during different periods. So Mrs. Brown's character is not limited to her social or maternal circumstances in the way Edwardian writers might suppose. So thus she ends her argument that as time change, writers and the tools that they use must evolve. She quotes, the tools of one generation are useless to the next. She places Bennett in the Edwardians and the subjects of his attack as Georgians to reflect the change of monarch in 1910. Thus, Wolf characterizes Georgian writers in modernist terms as impressionistic and those that are telling the truth. Through the essay, we see Wolf's vision of reality is captured in the world of an anonymous woman whom she has observed and gives the name Mrs. Brown whose world is to be reflected by modernist writers. This essay by Virginia Woolf becomes a key element in the analysis of 20th century literature in general. Hope this essay helped you. If you have query, please write it down. Thank you for listening.